What up, guys? It's Lance back with another interview. If you like what we're doing here, make sure you like and subscribe. But today we have Patrick Hilby. He go, currently goes to Aurora Central Catholic High School. He is going to Wisconsin next year, so congratulations to him. He was the two-way state champion in the 800-meter outdoor, and uh, he just won New Balance Indoor Nationals in the 800. He ran 148, and he is a two-time state champion this indoor season in the 4x8 and 4x4. He threw down a monster 4x4 leg to be able to to be able to get his team the win, which is absolutely awesome to watch. So, Patrick, how's your day been doing so far, man? Yeah, it's been going well. Yeah, thank you for bringing me on. I really appreciate it. I'm excited. And, uh, yeah, spring break, start of spring break. So, yeah, it should be good. Yeah, I'm excited. Do you have any big plans for spring break? Uh, no, actually, no, not really until um, the end of next week where I'm heading up to uh, Arcadia. So that'll be like a nice trip and then hopefully re run fast there. What are you going to race? Uh, the 800. Yeah, just the 800 there. Who's so, going to be in that field? That'll be fun. I don't, the entries came out yesterday, but like they're the heat sheets didn't come out. So like the top guys, like there's, you can't see like what event they're doing. It just says one individual event. So there's some like top guys that are entered in one individual event and then maybe like a relay. So hopefully you get a good field. And I'm sure there will be for sure at Arcadia. It's Arcadia, man. It's absolutely awesome. The environment's absolutely unreal. Yeah. You're, you're going to run super fast. Mm -hmm. So what got you your running start? Uh, so my running start, my track career started in like fifth grade where I was more of a football basketball guy coming in to, you know, run. And I did mostly sprints and like jumps. I did long jump, triple jump and the 100, 200, four by four. And then I think I ran one, I ran like an eight, one or two 800s in fifth grade and I ran like 250. So yeah, I mean, my running career in middle school kind of started just, you know, my dad was a track, he's a track coach at West Aurora High School. He's a jumps coach and hurdles coach. So he's, you know, we were a big track family. So, I mean, just, you know, doing track, see how it is. And, you know, I was pretty solid at it. I was a good, solid sprinter. But uh, it definitely towards high school, I started to realize that I'd probably be more of a 800 runner, you know, maybe even mile at some point. So you said your dad was a coach. So he had a track background. Yeah, no, he 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 didn't really have a background. He only ran in high school. He, but then, um, yeah, he started coaching track. I don't know, like twenty years ago or something at West Aurora Jumps and Hurdles coach. So completely opposite to what I do what I do right now. But yeah, it's been fun to like watch him over the years have you know state champions and so, stuff like that. West Aurora is a really good good program for sure. Absolutely. So I mean since you said you started with long and triple, is there a thoughts of going back this outdoor season? Uh, to what was that? Oh, long and triple jump. <laughs> I actually long jumped freshman year and then one time indoor sophomore year, but I don't think my coach will let me. He's, he's, he doesn't want me to get hurt, but I would, if I had the choice, I would definitely try long jump at one, like random me and just see what I could do. You would, you would honestly confuse the heck out of every coach there. And if they see your yeah. name in the heat sheet for a long jump, that'd be legendary. Yeah, no. That'd be legendary. That'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah. But coach probably won't let me. That, that's messed up. I think you, I think you need talking into him. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. Hopefully maybe. So one of the, one of the things that you kind of skimmed over was that you're a multi-sport athlete for every year until mm -hmm. now. And that's absolutely awesome. You're a basketball player. Um, kind of walk me through how did you juggle not only running at a high level, but also competing in other sports? Yeah, so I didn't like freshman and sophomore year, I didn't really, you know, I didn't do any track training until actual track season because I was focused on, you know, football and basketball. But then after sophomore year, I just like track was probably gonna be my thing. And uh I quit football for cross country junior year, which was definitely a great decision but during basketball season I definitely I wasn't it was a little hard to like see you know are you kids running super fast in, in like January and February when I'm still playing basketball but I just had to you know during basketball season I probably ran maybe once or twice a week and then I didn't really get to like actual workouts until you know late to mid or mid to late February and then um yeah just kind of trust in the process and you know know that my progression will We'll def definitely hit because last year my progression was a steady upcline the whole season rather than this season without playing basketball and having more training. It's going to be a super, you know, up climb for the first part and then just kind of having to maintain that. Like I'm not going to be like last year I dropped six seconds off my 800 from indoor to outdoor. So I don't I don't think that's going to happen this year. So 
definitely different to um, stay focused on track. But yeah, during basketball, just kind of kept my head, you know, where it's at and just trust the process, I think. So, I mean, you don't think you can, you have 142 in your real house this year, you don't think? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think I, I don't think I got that in me. You know, who knows? But uh, I'd be willing to bet a lot of money that I will not be running 142 this year. <laughs> at least, I mean, at least you're confident in yourself. Good grief. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, for sure, yeah. So, I mean, we, I mean, we've had a conversation. I mean, how was basketball for you? Do you think that it helped you a little bit for a track at all? Yeah, no, for sure. I think just running year round and just, you know, running year round, it definitely, it, it works for many people. But for me, I think, you know, playing multiple sports has been very beneficial to me, like basketball, you know, plyometrics, it's just plyometrics a lot. So that definitely, definitely helps your explosiveness for running and just, I think, you know, playing different sports, like you get to compete in a different way, like basketball court, you can guard, you know, it's just, it's a different way to compete. Like if you're just running all winter, I mean, you're not really, you're, you're definitely, you know, getting some benefit for sure. I mean, I, I, like I said, it works for a lot of people, but in a different aspect to it, it like, you're still competing at, you know, in a high school sport for your school. So, and also I have like a, I go to a smaller school, there's only like 450 kids. So I was able to make the basketball team and have like a role on it. Like rather if I went to like a big public school, I don't know if I, I would have probably made the team, but I wouldn't be seeing the floor at all. So I think that's another aspect of why I've played multiple sports so long. And uh, yeah, they, I've just really enjoyed them. I've always, you know, loved watching NFL and it's not really NBA anymore, but like college basketball, college football for sure. So definitely love to stay in those sports as long as possible. So I actually didn't know that you played football. What position were you? I was wide receiver, running back, and cornerback mostly. So, yeah, I played – it was actually – freshman year was weird because football got moved to the spring, I remember. So, one of my friends in the fall or the summer was like, hey, you should try, you know, cross country. And I was like – I would, I like – I did not want to, but my parents forced me to. I uh, To be honest, I didn't really, didn't really enjoy it, but I got on the top seven uh, at the end of the – like towards the end of the season on a state qualifying team. And – um yeah, then I played basketball in the winter, and then football was actually, like, right now, like, in the spring, and then I did track in the spring, obviously, and that went to, like, late June, I remember. So, yeah, then my coach still let me play football, and, you know, I loved football sophomore year, but I knew that if I wanted to excel even more in my track, then I would have to, you know, run cross-country. I mean, you had a great cross-country experience this year. You got uh, um, ninth, no, eighth, right? Wait, which one yeah, was? yeah, I was I was dueling it out with Carson the whole time. <laughs> yeah, I I love uh I love the story that he always um that he told me um when he was coming back he was like I knew Hilby was behind me and I didn't know where but I knew he was behind me. Was <laughs> no, yeah, that was yeah, that was a, I think I may have cut him off one time maybe so I sorry to him for that but yeah no, it was a great great battle between me and him for sure. I think I think it's funny because uh he was just like I was I was scared that I was gonna get hawked and he I, he did at the end but I think he gave him a valiant effort and uh he doesn't remember you cutting him off but uh I I wouldn't put it past you no I'm just kidding I'm yeah, just no, kidding. yeah I think it was around the two mile mark when we were heading like to the right of the finish line not like around that loop again I think I may have got him a little bit but no nonetheless still still a good race for sure I mean. Ninth is absolutely awesome, especially as only your second year cross country. I know you ran 150, but like it's substantially different than um than track in the 800. Mm -hmm. What was kind yeah, of yeah for sure? What was kind of your training for cross country? And and, and sorry, what was your kind of training for cross country different than track? Yeah, track is definitely more speed oriented. You know, 200s and stuff like that. I think. Cross country on the track, we would do, you know, mile repeats, K repeats, maybe some 800 repeats, or we would do like, we'd go on a trail and we would do like five minutes on five minutes off. And then like the off would be like super slow jog. We do five, four, three, two, one. I mean, the mileage was definitely more for cross country than track. Uh, during the summer, I was, you know, hit more, you know, longer stuff. Well, not longer stuff to like actual distance runners, but like longer stuff for me and like middle distance. But, um, yeah, and we had a good training group. We had a good team. Uh, and, yeah, I think just, like, kind of more more longer stuff for sure, like miles and stuff. Like, the longest I do right now is I did K, re like, some – I'd, like, five by a K on Monday, I think. And I, I think in a ladder – in a ladder workout, I did 
one twelve hundred rep, but like that's like the farthest I'll go for track. And my like my my like base runs for track are definitely a lot shorter. Also, probably the longest will be like five five miles or so. So that brings me to my next question. I know we've had this conversation multiple times, but I just need people to hear this. What is a weekly volume look like for you? During track or cross country? Let's just do both of them. All right. So cross country over the summer, probably my average was around 30 to 35. And I hit peaked at 40 miles one week. And then during the season, like in season, it would be less mileage just because of races and like pre-meet and stuff like that. So during the season, probably 25 to 30. And then during track season, probably, you know, over the winter is a little longer, maybe 20. And then right now, probably like 15 around there. And then even probably when we get to the end of the year, like May and June, probably even less than that, honestly, just because there's more like speed oriented workouts and shorter stuff. But yeah, it's kind of what my mileage has been. I think that's absolutely wild that you are running 15 miles a week and you, uh, and you are currently running this fast. I just, you, you heard about it with Kate flat. I don't know if you remember that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Like the five to 10 miles a week. You are literally Kate flat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Definitely hope to be a little more humble than Kate flat. Hopefully he gets back <laughs> on track, but yeah. But yeah, I mean, kind of similar training. I feel like with him is uh, yeah, that shorter mileage for sure. You, you, so you do a lot of speed stuff you covered. What is a, what does a usual workout look like for you? Yeah. So our main workout, like our bread and butter is like 200. So we do like, let's say February and March, like right now we'd be doing our indoor season. We would do like 10 to 12 by 200 with super short rest. But then when we get to like May and June, we would like put spikes on and do, you know, four by 200, five by 200 with like pretty long rest like four to five minute rest but they would all be like super fast so I think that kind of as the season goes on we increase or decrease the volume and increase the rest rather than at the start of the season it would be like more rep or more volume like less rest and, and then we would do like ladders we do that like we would do a k 800 600 400 200 like kind of those workouts and I think the main difference between this year and last year with my workouts are I have a lot shorter rest this year. Like I'd be last year, you know, I'd do two to th two thirty rest, three rest. And then this year I got down to like 60 seconds rest for some workouts. Now it's kind of going to increase a little bit, but I think having that short rest definitely benefited me for sure. So you were blessed to race at the biggest stage for indoor in high school U S in one. That's absolutely awesome. What yeah. was that experience like? Walk me through that. Yeah, no, it was, it was a super fun weekend. It was super fun to meet all the other, you know, competitors running and all the other, you know, New Balance people. And it was super fun to be in the same environment as NCAAs that weekend. We were fortunate enough to be able to watch both prelims and finals in the, at the track. And it was just, it was super just great being in that environment and seeing all the fast people and just uh, the 800 for sure watching those is super you know super physical you know elbows are being thrown I mean there's some grown men out there for sure and it's just it's just so cool seeing them like going four lanes wide all the way around and all of them are at 147 just bam like right there so definitely definitely gonna have a lot of work to do going into next year but super fun weekend and then the actual race I mean just you know super fun the plan was to go out and lead the whole thing and may not go out in 24 but <laughs> i guess it I guess it worked out a little bit but yeah no it was super fun to cross that line in first and just see you know all the fans and all the people you know giving me high fives and stuff so that was a super fun day and just to watch all the other competitors succeed and just the whole trip boston's an amazing city i love it so yeah super fun walking around there so yeah just a fun weekend all around so, I mean, you, you said it, I was going to cover it. You got out at 24. You were full. Mm -hmm. What, like, what caused you to get out at 24? Well, I just, just seeing those, you know, indoor 800s, especially in the NCAA level when there's so much traffic and if you get boxed in and it's super hard, it's so fast, you can't really make a move if you're boxed in and stuff. So the goal is just to get out in front of everyone and just not look back and don't get involved in any of that stupid tactical traffic stuff that, it's unnecessary. And, um, yeah, I just kind of 
got out like you know a normal race and you know the banks are something about those banks it just like <laughs> it just felt something good and I just I saw the line I saw the time when I was like oh shoot I kind of gotta kind of gotta reel it in I can't be going out that fast but I I don't think I wasn't too nervous about you know dying off because I felt pretty good the whole race so I was pretty confident in that but yeah I mean just I think that 52 mark was kind of the the way to go I think that was pretty perfect on that and then you know, just kept looking up at the board. There's a big board on the back stretch to see where my competitors were. And I saw with a hundred to go, there's a bit of a gap forming. So just trusting my training, trusting myself and, you know, pump the arms and cross the line. So, I mean, that was kind of the race plan and it worked pretty well. Yeah. I mean, that was, that was I watched the race back and I hadn't seen your splits yet. And I saw you go through a 24 and I was like, what does he run here? But you actually ran it even 28, 28, 28, right? You mm -hmm. ran after? Yeah, it was, yeah, I think 28, 28, and then like 27 high or something like that. But yeah, pretty even other than that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I, I'm going to be honest. I didn't expect you to run that even after 24. I mean, yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, I was, I was a, I was a little scared after that, but then everything, it went to plan. So that was good to see. Yeah, I, I was super pumped watching watching you race. Um, I remember watching the live results actually. I do remember mm -hmm. we didn't yeah. we had to make sure we uh we watched that. And we also watched the mile. I mean, you um yeah something that a lot of people don't know about you. You ran four oh eight for the full mile at that opening meet for new new bounce. That was absolutely yeah. It was I think it was four four oh eight for sixteen hundred or four. I don't honestly. Yeah. I think yeah four ten for the full mile or something like it. But pretty much you know the same thing. Yeah. Okay. So walk me through that race. You know, the, before that race, I'm not gonna lie. I was pretty, I was pretty, I was pretty nervous because you know, just I've been only been trained. I've only been doing like workouts for you know a month or two, and those workouts were consisted of a 200 flat track, like when it was like negative 30 outside, and people are playing pickleball on the curves, so it's you know dodging that. So I didn't really know where my fitness was at, and I just looked at the start list and I looked at the names, and I'm like, I could. I could get dead last in this race and just, you know, cause I didn't know where my fitness was, especially since it wasn't an 800. It wasn't even my main event. It was a mile. So, cause that all oh, going in my, my, like my 1600 is 418. So, I mean, that put me in dead last and on paper, but yeah, I mean, my goal was just to get out there and compete. Honestly, it was February 3rd or 4th. So, I mean, nothing really mattered at that point. So, I mean, just kind of put myself out there and compete. I think I, came through the 800 and 202 high or 203 and I just like I was just like all right let's 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 try to close fast here and those those fifth and sixth laps I'm not gonna lie I fell asleep a little bit on those like the third it was the third the third lap like outdoors like the third lap of the mile outdoors that's the one that gets you but then with the you know, 300 to go I felt good and I saw some people ahead of me so I you know went and caught a few guys at the end and uh yeah I mean it was a super great weekend also super fun experience but yeah, when you're in a race with Jojo Jordan going sub four, I mean, it's pretty pretty easy to stick your – just to go along for the ride and run fast. So, yeah, that was that was fun. Hoping to, you know, uh, improve on that time, though, for sure, this outdoor season. So, I kind of covered it with you, but when are you trying to go sub four? Sub four. I don't know about that, but um, we'll – I think I'm going to try to run the mile at Palatine and uh, see what I have there. I don't – I was talking with Gavin at top times and he said he might like go to Drake relays or pen relays that weekend. So he might not be at Palatine, but you know, the guys like Cam and VJ and Bandu Kuala, Trey Sato, you know, all those guys in three, a, I think if we all decide to run the mile, it'll be a fun, you know, fun race to try to go run fast. And uh, I think, I think sub four, you know, I don't, I don't know where my, I actually have no clue. Cause I ran, 410 in February and I you know my fitness has obviously increased so yeah definitely shooting for you know fast time at Palatine I don't know what that'll come up at to be but you know if I have to push the pace I will and uh you know see what I just see what happens I mean it's a fun me great atmosphere so I think that'll be my next you know big mile for sure I mean there's one place to do it in Illinois is definitely Palatine that is mm -hmm. go to. yeah hopefully it's Palatine, right yeah, I raced the 800, my, I raced section two of the 800 my sophomore year and then uh, the main event last year. So yeah, I love that meet. It's super fun. You know, it's just great, great to see all the runners from Illinois, great music playing. And, you know, it's hopefully it's better weather this year. It's a little, a little colder last year, but still made work, made it work. I think sophomore year when I ran, it was like 60 something degrees and, you know, 
So it was, it was great, but yeah, hopefully this year it's a good conditions to run, run a good time for sure. So you've been blessed to be in a lot, a lot of awesome races. And there's one more yeah. to cover with you. Um, yeah. You were at the Hoka festival miles. He, you ran the 800. You mm -hmm. have the fastest guy in the country. You are, I think third at the time. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. Absolutely yeah. Awesome to watch that. And you went around with 300 to go. And I was, I was pumped. I remember watching that. Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. What I mean, what was that race? Like that was absolutely awesome to watch. Yeah, no, for sure. Before I talk about the race, I just want to say like, you know, being blessed to be in great races, I think has been a big thing for me running fast because Hoka new balance outdoor last year. I mean, it was yeah. perfect weather, no wind at all. Just great conditions, you know, under the lights, you know, everything just went to plan. And I think, you know, being, being in races like that are super important, I think to run fast, but yeah, I mean, you kind of got to get lucky on like the wind and stuff like that. So definitely super fortunate for that. Kind of got lucky on that, but yeah, the actual race itself. I mean, I was coming off a of state running, you know, 150, and you know, my thing was like, I'm, I'm not, I don't have any pressure on me. I'm a junior. And then like Dan, Dan got all the pressure on him to try to win. And I think I'm in that position this year with being, having pressure, but last year, I mean, it was, I just kind of towed the line. I'm like, all right, you know, we'll see, try to stick with Dan and see what happens. And I think we came through in like 53 or some 52 high 53. And uh, with 300 to go, that's kind of where I make my move. And um, yeah, I mean, I went with 300 to go and, you know, 250, I saw, you know, I was, you know, challenging for the lead and with 200 to go. I got the, got the break and I was in the lead with 200 to go. And that, that feeling was just pretty surreal. The adrenaline was pumping. And then with 150 to go, I kind of knew he was going to be, you know, lurking there. And uh, sure enough, with 100 to go, he kind of blew past me. But I just kept kept pumping the arms and trying to stay on. And, uh, yeah, I crossed the line. And, like, people are saying 148, and I didn't I didn't believe him at all. I'm like, I asked one guy. I asked, like, one of the guys. And I'm like, yo, what did I run? What did I run? He showed me his phone with the results. And I, like, I couldn't believe it at all. I'm like, there's no way I skipped 149. Then I... Then I, there's actually on the live stream when Billy, the toad guy, he's interviewing Dan, you could see me throwing up in the background. <laughs> so yeah, that was, that was a pretty, uh, Mike Newman was, uh, waiting for the interview and he was just standing over me while I was throwing up. I'm like, <laughs> that was pretty funny, but yeah, definitely, uh, shouldn't have eaten what I think I ate fettuccine Alfredo or something before. So don't do that. That don't was a that. great idea. Yeah, no. <laughs> But yeah, super, it was just a super fun meet. Also, the atmosphere was awesome. So yeah, that was, that was definitely a special night for sure. I remember seeing that picture of you um, throwing up on the ground on no context. And I didn't realize it was actually you until you yeah. put it on your story. And I thought, oh, no, yeah. Weird. Yeah, that was, that was super funny. Yeah, I was, I was dead after that. And what's worse is I like, I was laying down and I felt it, you know, throat. I felt it coming up and I actually puked <laughs> like all over my Jersey and stuff. It was pretty disgusting, but yeah, no, that was, that was fun for sure. So, I mean, are you, do you have any plans to maybe um, mix in a mile there this year or are we going to stick with the 800? Yeah. I don't, I don't even, I don't, yeah. Postseason is a little tough. I don't know if like, I don't know if I'm running at Hoka or not. It's just, you know, with Brooks, I don't, yeah, it's just a lot of stuff. There's Hoka, then there's Brooks and there's U twenties and there's new balance out there. It's just, I'm not going to be able to run at all of them. I don't think, yeah. Yeah. And especially with state being five days prior to that or whatever. I think this year, the focus for state, you know, we're, our team is, you know, looking great this year. So I'm, if we want to contend for a trophy, I'm probably going to have to run, you know, three, four events maybe and with prelims and stuff. So I just, I don't know. It's just, it's going to be hard to figure out what I'm going to, be running this postseason but um yeah definitely can't definitely won't be able to run all of them just I won't be you know prep fully prepped for them so uh yeah definitely still trying to figure that out Hoka is definitely up there in the cards for you know races that postseason but I think right now the focus is for that state me and just for the team and see if we can uh, win a trophy for sure absolutely and the good thing for you is it's going to be pretty easy to run rounds for you through that day yeah, for the for the I think for the four by eight we can qualify without me on it potentially, and then the eight hundred will be pretty I think pretty comfortable also. And then if I you know plan on doing the open four or the mile, I don't know. I think I think doing the eight four double 
at state <clears throat> is um it's a little easier than the eight mile just because that mile is just you know it really it really gets to you gets to your legs for sure and I so does the 400 but I mean that and then for the four by four I think I'll probably have to run on that in the prelims but Maybe yeah, I'm not 100 percent sure what I'm gonna run at state. <coughs> I mean, I'm sorry. No, you're good, man. <coughs> you know how uh, state is with uh with a uh, big blue. It's got to be 102 on the track. It's mm, mm-hmm. absolutely grueling. It's it has to be. It's every year. It's like- oh yeah, for sure. I always feel like in the prelims, like the travel the night before, just you know messing around with my teammates. I always feel pretty terrible in the prelims, like. I remember Mike Newman interviewed me after the prelim session. and He's like, are we going to see a 150 or 151 tomorrow? And I was thinking in my head, like, after that, like, 155 felt pretty terrible. Like, <laughs> my legs were pretty terrible. But, yeah, usually finals day, you know, comes around pretty well. So, uh, yeah, I think it's just – yeah, there's something about that, you know, that track, though. It's just super special. It's always it's always sunny and hot, but, you know, it's it's always a great day for sure. Not a cloud in the sky ever. No, yeah, no, not at all. And there's no shade yet anywhere. That field house, though, I've I spent many hours in that field house just sitting, just laying down in there. Absolutely. So we've we've covered a lot, well, actually a lot. You've been blessed to be in a lot of great races. How do you race best? Um, hmm. I race. I think I race like in um, like when there's when there's people around. I think my main thing is I've been you know a front runner in races that I'm supposed to win. I've been a front runner for sure. But I think in races I race best is where, you know, tactics are not like in my favor. I haven't been in like a, like a tactical race where I've been boxed in. I have to make a move, but like new balance outdoor, I was obviously not in the lead at all. Um, But I think um, I race best when I get out just super fast and try to get up there on the leaders because uh, then you can just just stick on their back and just kind of go along for the ride. And I think I think getting out faster is better for me just uh, just to compete. And I think uh, like in New Balance Outdoor, you know, I was with Tenoda, Drew Regnier, and uh, so that, you know those guys. So I just tried to you know stick on their back as long as I could. And obviously, you know, the last one hundred was a little little struggling on the last hundred, but uh, yeah, I think. I race best usually when I'm towards the front and I don't have to, you know, make a big dramatic kick at the end to win. But, um, yeah, I just, it just, you know, mentally it's better for me to not be in the back, just like, Oh, when am I going to have to make this big move? You know, but when you're in the already in the front, it's just like, all right, when, when do I pass, you know, this guy right in front of me or when do I, you know, make the final move to seal the win? But yeah, I think that's when I race, race the best. Absolutely. Um, so you, like I said, you are going to the University of Wisconsin next year. So congratulations on that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, what did your recruiting process look like? Yeah, so recruiting process started, you know, after uh, sophomore year, like in that summer. And, you know, just calling as many, you know, just calling coaches as they, you know, contacted me. And uh, I think after Palatine last year, the coach from Iowa State and coach from Wisconsin, like the assistant coaches were there, like in person. So I think that's when I, like, really started to go and then um after I ran 150 and 148 at Hoka then more coaches contacted but like after that at that point I already kind of had my top choices so I unfortunately had to you know leave out some schools because they just came in a little too late so my top four were Wisconsin obviously then I visited Iowa State and then Notre Dame and then uh UNC Chapel Hill was another one in my top choices so it came down to, you know, great program versus great program. So it was just great. It was just a very difficult decision, but I think Wisconsin with just the coaching staff and the history, you know, they had two guys run at worlds last year and then they're coming back to run this year at Wisconsin. And just the campus is beautiful academics, you know, a number one priority, obviously when you're choosing like a school like that. And then, cause, and then it's only about two hours from where I live. So I kind of preferred And I wouldn't mind going far away, but I kind of preferred like at the end of the day to stay closer to home. It's a good distance where, you know, I'm not like practically in my hometown, but I'm not, you know, across the country. So I think it's it's just kind of the whole package for sure. Absolutely. What are you going to major in? Uh, I was thinking um, I had two different options. They're pretty different. I was thinking either engineering or finance. Yeah. So um, I I think, 
Yeah, no, I think I'm going to start in finance and see, you know, where that takes me because, you know, engineering is, you know, I'm very interested in it, but it's definitely very grueling and tough. So, um, yeah, I mean, who knows? Maybe I'll, you know, end up in engineering, but I think finance, I'm still very interested in that concept and just, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to like, you know, actual classes and that like uh, about your major and, you know, dealing with money and kind of that stuff. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Absolutely. So I like to end some of my last few questions off with kind of some fun things. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So as when we recorded this, um, this is Illinois just beat Iowa State to Adelia. Who uh, is your pick to win March Madness? Uh, my pick, I'm I'm honestly in the in the dumps right now in the brackets. I was going in yesterday with a great bracket. I had North Carolina winning it all, and it did not go well but I was even more mad I'm not gonna lie I know you guys are probably Illinois fans and all that but my dad went to went to Iowa State for college so I've been a big Iowa State fan kind of all my life so to see them lose to a team like Illinois was pretty pretty painful because <laughs> I don't like I think I've grown I'm sorry but I think I've grown a new hate for Illinois not as much as Iowa not as much as Iowa. I really don't like Iowa, but <laughs> Illinois might be my, you know, one of my bigger rivals also. But uh, yeah, that was a painful game, honestly. Terrence Shannon, he's 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 good. <laughs> he's good. <laughs> so um, yeah, but uh, yeah, I'll be looking forward to watch that UConn game versus Illinois tomorrow. So that'll be a fun game to watch. But yeah, you know, my bracket was going well, and then it kind of went downhill after that after last night. But if Creighton and Duke can make the final four, then I'm in decent shape. But after my championship team just lost, it's not looking too good. My championship team lost too. If it makes you feel better, I actually picked Iowa State to go all the way. Ah, uh, yeah, no, that, it was a sleeper pick. Like they've been, they're a sleeper pick, but yeah, they just didn't, did not, they couldn't get anything going last night. Absolutely. So uh, that brings me to my next question. What is your favorite dad joke? Oh, shoot. <laughs> I don't really, I don't really know too many dad jokes. It's, oh shoot, I have like, ah uh, shoot, yeah. There's some cringy ones that my dad has said sometimes, but uh, I can't think of, can't think of any right now. I know, I know, like as soon as this is over, I'm gonna think of like so many, <laughs> and I'm like, oh shoot, but um, what's one? Yeah, I don't really know. There's the classic like, oh, can I go to the bathroom? And it's like, oh, can you? Like the teacher, the classic like dumb teacher thing. Yeah. But um, yeah, dad jokes. Like, do you got an example like of a dad joke that? So my favorite one personally is uh, I said this last time. What is your uh, what is something orange that is bad for your teeth? Oh, I have no idea what. A brick. See, like it's stupid. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I that's. Find, I find hey, it's not. You're not wrong though. But yeah, I can. Yeah. <laughs> that's sure. But that's definitely my humor. The stupid stuff makes me laugh the most. Yeah, I know. Sometimes, yeah, it's just like the dumb. Yeah, it's like there's you had no business laughing at that, but it's so it's yeah, I don't know. Yeah, dad jokes are good, but if I'm in a bad mood and someone says it, I'm just like, all right, you can just don't <laughs> just stop talking. <laughs> so do you do you by chance listen to music? Um, I've I do, but it's pretty it's like very, very basic. I'm not a big like I listen to music. Like, I love music before, you know, races and just, you know, when I'm chilling. But, uh, yeah, I mean, my favorite – I listen to a lot of Drake before races. But, um, you know, you know, Travis Scott and, like, the typical, like, pretty basic stuff. But uh, when I'm just chilling, I love Green Day. I love listening to them. So, uh, yeah, like, kind of that alternative, you know, I love rock too. So, I mean, that's – I like kind of that sort of stuff. But not, like, too – I'm not too like knowledgeable on you know, a lot of music, but yeah, like kind of just the basic stuff. So for my last question, this is by far my favorite question I asked to any of my interviewers. I asked it to every single one. If you could go back in time and tell young Patrick one thing, doesn't necessarily have to be about running. You can choose when that time frame would be. What would you tell him? Mm, I would just tell him to uh, I would just tell him to like honestly just to trust just trust the process and just trust everything that you're doing because everything you know has happens for a reason because when I was younger I you know I think everyone had this dream but like I had a dream you know NFL player NBA player and obviously that's I'm 5'9 so that's not going to come really <laughs> to fruition but um 
Yeah, but I would just tell them to uh, enjoy like every moment you've had, every like enjoy every day because I feel like we keep looking back. Like I think a big example, like did you play Fortnite when it was oh, a big thing? Absolutely, dude. Yeah, like I feel like I keep looking back on that with me and my friends. I'm like, oh, I wish you know we get back to you know that those prime Fortnite days in you know middle school and whatever. But I think I would tell him to enjoy every day. Like I would tell myself right now, enjoy like this, enjoy today, enjoy the senior year, because in a few years from now, I'm going to be looking back, you know, I'm going to be like, oh, I wish I could go back to, you know, senior year of high school, kind of that stuff. So when you're stressed about something or when you're, you know, in a bad mood and where you're, you know, kind of don't, you know, in a, in a bad mood, kind of stressed, just kind of tell yourself that in a few years from now, you're going to wish you were in this position. You're going to wish that you are here and just, um, you know, living life like you are now. Cause you know, it's going to change, obviously, you know, going off to college and getting a job and, you know, something, you know, in the real world. But I think you're going to look back and just, just tell yourself like, Hey, just enjoy every day. Enjoy, you know, you know, I know it might, it might suck, but like, enjoy, <laughs> I guess it's kind of weird. Like enjoy getting trouble in school because like, enjoy, you know, cutting your, cutting your knee open, enjoy, you know, failing a test, you know, even though it's like kind of, kind of sucks, just like kind of right now, it's like, oh, you know, that feeling when, you know, dad comes home and you get in trouble at school, like there's no feeling like that. Just kind of, even though like the bets, like bad stuff, I don't know. It's just, I feel like you just need to enjoy every day because, you know, we might not get tomorrow. We might not get next week. So it's just kind of, just enjoy every day and just trust the plot process and trust the plan that, you know, everything's going to, everything's going to work out in the end and just, yeah, just have fun, honestly. I'm going to be honest. I have I have asked that to so many people, and that may be the best answer that I've <laughs> ever heard. Like, wow, thank you. Thank you, was, man. Yeah. That's like the most mature answer out of even some adults. That was absolutely awesome and on point. And, um, and, uh, thank we, you, man. We had, I really appreciate it, yeah. We had career day yesterday, and so like uh, we had like mm -hmm. a thing. And so you did like a like – a, survey a few weeks earlier to see which yeah. you're interested in they'll put you in this classroom and you get to uh, talk to these employers right and mm -hmm. so we have this keynote speaker he's a guy that graduated from our high school now he's yeah. rental properties and stuff like that i think he owns like 256 properties throughout the country mm -hmm. and uh oh, wow yeah so, um super successful guy right fantastic dude that was mm -hmm. actually one of the things that he said and um our coach actually said that before practice and um mm -hmm. i think it just Perfect sums up what the week has been so far and just enjoy every moment. And that was, epic. yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. That's kind of, kind of how I've tried to live my life and uh, it can definitely be hard sometimes, but you just got to kind of see it through and be like, Hey, you know, I'm going to wish I was in this position. So, I mean, yeah, just, just great for sure. You did a great job, dude. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for bringing me on. This is awesome. Yeah. I loved, love being here. Love answering your questions and, uh, yeah, it was just fun to have a conversation. It definitely felt like a conversation. Like it wasn't like a cute, it just felt like a you know normal conversation. So that was great. That's what I love. That's what I love to try to make it happen. Like I, I like last yeah. interview that I did, um, I forgot that I was doing an interview. Um, you kind of mm -hmm. just, yeah, no. rhythm of yeah. conversation. And I think that's absolutely awesome. And again, thank you so much for taking time out of your day, dude. Yeah, no, no worries at all. Yeah, super appreciative of having having me come on here and uh yeah i loved every minute of it and it was super fun and uh yeah good luck this outdoor season when were well, you guys gonna be at palatine will i see you there well uh i think we're gonna pull up to palatine i think we. i bet yeah yeah we'll i'll definitely... see you then yeah just you know have a great rest of your day have a great weekend have a great easter and uh yeah hopefully to see you soon dude absolutely thank you so much man yeah no worries yeah, yeah. have a great rest of your day thank you thank you too